Today we're going to finish off our, our trilogy of Capture One videos. We've had getting started with Capture One, we've had color grading in Capture One, and then today we're going to talk about working with layers in Capture One because this, ooh, as it always is, is your torch is they. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, as I said in the intro, as I said in the intro, we're going to dive back into Capture One to cap off kind of our trilogy of Capture One videos. Now we've had getting started with Capture One, we've had color grading in Capture One. I'll link to both of those down in the description and maybe even in the comments as well. But today we're going to talk about one of the one of the interesting features of Capture One, which is working with layers. It's something that sets it apart from things like Lightroom and things like that. And it really, really makes a big difference as to kind of how you can edit your photo. You know, we've talked in the past about editing locally rather than globally. So actually editing individual parts of your photo separately uh, because they might require different types of edits as opposed to just globally affecting the photo. But with Capture One, you can really get in deep and do a lot of that. So let's just dive straight in. I've got this photo here. Obviously, if you've seen the other two photos, you'll be familiar with our setup here with Capture One. We've got all of our kind of sub menus down the left and we've got all our pictures down here on the right. Today, like I said, we're gonna be working with the layers. So you can see at the top of the exposure sub menu and the color sub menu, you've got this little layers panel. And you can see that as you start it up, I mean, I haven't done anything to this photo, as you start it up, it's just got the one layer background, which you'll, if you've worked with Photoshop before, you'll be really familiar with that as well. Now, essentially the background layer is just the photo and there's absolutely nothing to stop you. You could just work with that one layer edit the photo just on the background layer, not have any problems, you know, you, could, you can affect exposure, uh, highlights, shadows, all the kinds of stuff, all of the color editing, you're not gonna have any issues with that, but we're gonna show you exactly what you can do by working with layers. So first things first, let's use the background layer to affect our exposure. Let's get that to where we want it to be. And maybe let's affect the white balance as well. Now, something that I've been doing a lot recently when it comes to white balance, when it comes to editing, and of course shooting in RAW makes this super easy, is uh, something like this, which was a nice warm kind of sunset vibe. The photo actually is a little bit more, it's a little bit cooler uh, than I would like it. And that's purely because I shot it on auto white balance and the camera just uh, tried to get rid of too many of those warm tones. So I'm gonna come up here to white balance. I'm just gonna grab this eyedropper tool, the pick white balance, and I'm gonna select the white in the cliffs here and that's just gonna warm it up a little bit. I might even then just bring it up even a tad more, just to really get a bit of warmth coming through there from the sun. Now, I'm gonna essentially, like I say, I'm gonna use this background layer just to control the exposure, and that's essentially gonna become my, my kind of exposure uh, layer, if you like. So let's come up here to the exposure submenu. I'm actually going to, I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit. Um, I'm gonna pop the contrast a tiny bit as well maybe the saturation, just a touch. And then I'm gonna bring the highlights down so that we get a little bit more detail in those clouds. If you look over there, we've got a little bit of detail coming in there and just boost the shadows up a little bit. Now you might remember from the last video, we can see what we've actually done. We can see the before and after of the whole photo by holding Alt on our keyboard, left click and hold on the reset button in the top left. That was before and this is where we are so far. So this is what we've got to with our edit. I already really like it. I already think it has some nice warm vibes that I want to go for. Um, yeah, I love it. I love I love the way we've, uh, we've kind of handled the exposure here. Let's just bring the clarity up a tiny bit. And uh, vignetting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that down just a touch because I want, I want it to have a very kind of slightly vignetted feel. So that's our exposure kind of taken care of there. The next thing we're gonna go into is color. We've not done really anything with color outside of adjusting the white balance a little bit. So we're gonna do that, but we're gonna do that on a new layer. Now I'm gonna tell you why. It's mainly because, the, or this is the reason that I do it. I work uh, this way within Capture One because I find it very easy. So I'll use the background layer to handle my exposure and get the photo to look the way I wanted it to look with highlights and shadows and exposure and contrast and that sort of thing. And then on a new layer, I'll begin the color grade where I'll affect things like the color editor you know, the color mix, adding colors into the highlights and the midtones and the shadows. But I'll do all that on, on a separate layer, a color grade layer, because that means I can easily turn that on and off, see how much coloring I've done without affecting the exposure as well. I can easily then reduce it, 
uh, apply more, go in and, and, and change different values. It's very, very easy. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come here to the top left where we've got the layers panel. And we're gonna click this little plus icon here. And that creates a new layer, layer one. Now we're gonna, we're gonna double click there. I'm gonna call this color grade. And we have to tell Capture One how much of the photo this is going to apply to. Now, we're actually gonna apply it to the whole photo. So I'm just gonna collect, select the, uh, the linear gradient mask there. And I'm just gonna drag it right down here in the corner. I'm gonna drag it so that it's coming right across the photo so that we've got it affecting the entire photo. If you do wanna see the mask again, you can just press M to turn that on and you can see how much of the photo this layer is affecting. We want it affecting the whole layer. Now, this isn't necessarily something you have to do. You could absolutely do the color grade on the background layer as well. I just like to do it because we've got this little opacity slider up here, which means that if I do a full color grade on the photo, and at the end of it, I think, oh, I like it, but it's just a little bit too much. I don't want to go into every single color thing I've done and just reduce it a little bit. I can just come up here to the opacity slider and bring the whole thing down to something like 85. And it's going to just reduce the effect that I've put on that photo. So that's, that's the reason that I do it on a separate layer. It's just that I have this full control as I go of different layers stacking on top. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of coloring here. So we'll come up to the color menu. And this is where this is where this really differs from Lightroom. So with Lightroom, you can apply a gradient mask and you could drag it across the photo. And then you've got a number of options that you can change, exposure, contrast, saturation, all that kind of stuff. But you can't selectively use the HSL tab, for example, to change colors, change the hues, change the, the luminance, the saturation. You can't go in and do that within a mask. That is just a global edit. Whereas with Capture One, once you've applied a new layer and you've masked it onto the photo, so you tell Capture One where you want the layer to be applied to, you can do pretty much anything you want. You can change colors. I mean, I could have orange look one hue on one side of the photo, and then orange look a completely different hue on another side of the photo. It's incredibly powerful. So we're gonna come in here to the color submenu. We're gonna come down to the color editor, and I'm gonna bring the orange down a little bit in terms of hue, and the yellows a little bit as well. Not too much, but I just wanna I just want to richen those up. I'm also going to just pop the saturation on those a little bit. Just I really want that sun in the background to be, it's the focus of the photo, you know? Greens, I'm just going to just going to richen up to be a nice rich green as well. And then with the blues and the aquas, I'm going to, I'm going to move them a little bit towards each other and pop the saturation and bring the, bring the, the lightness down a little bit. So it's just going to make this sky in the top right and the top left just, uh, just pop a little bit more. Then down here, the color balance, the three-way color balance, we're gonna put some, some sort of teal into the shadows. I'm just gonna click and drag this over. We're gonna bring some, some sort of orange into the mid-tones and some sort of orange, yellowy orange into the highlights as well. If you want a little bit more detail on color grading uh, within Capture One, of course, we've got a whole video about that, so you can check that. I'll pop it down in the description for you so you can go and check that out. We can then go ahead and change some of these, but if you have a look at this, I can now turn on and off the color grade. So this is before we started color grading. This was after. Um, I'm probably gonna come up to the white balance and I'm, I think I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bring it over a little bit, the tint to the magenta side. Not too much, but I just wanted to get rid of some of the green tones that were coming through there. So let's look at before and then after a bit of a color grade. Now, I really like that because we could, like I say, we could reduce the opacity of the color grade and as you can see, we can just we can just make it as powerful or as subtle as we want, which is great. Let's come back to the background layer. I'm just going to bring the uh, the shadows up a little bit more, and maybe the overall exposure down. Now we can do all kinds of things that you would certainly do within Lightroom, but we can do them here. We can we can kind of go a little bit deeper here as well. So let's say, for example, we want to. We want to create a bit of sunlight, a bit of warm sunlight coming in from that uh, from that sun over here. We want to accentuate the feeling of the light. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. So we press plus to create a new layer, and I'm going to call this sunlight. Now I've got the option for how I want to apply the mask. So of course I could just draw a mask on here. I could create a nice big brush, set this so that I can see the mask when I'm drawing, and just draw this on. I can use the gradient tool like we've talked about before, or of course I can come in here to the radial gradient and uh, 
create a mask that way. This one, I'm actually gonna use the gradient mask again. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna come over to the sun. I'm just gonna drag this in from kind of that direction. I want it to really kind of pull across the photo from the sun. I'm gonna move it up a little bit so that it feathers quite nicely uh, over to the lighthouse. And I'm gonna come over here to my exposure. I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit. And I'm, I'm probably gonna bring the white balance up a little bit, make that a little bit warmer. It's just a very subtle effect. So if I turn that layer on and off now, we've got it on and off. You can see it's just adding a bit of light from that sun. I think that's enough. I think that's, that's actually enough. Um, there's different things we can then do with that. We could actually affect this so that it is only affecting the shadows. Let's say we don't want to affect the, uh, the highlights where that mask is. We only want it to affect the shadows. Let's go ahead and press M so we can see our mask. And then with the sunlight layer selected, let's come up here to Luma Range, just above the layers. We select that and we can actually tell Capture One what parts of the photo, based on the luminance, we want this mask to be applied to. So right now it's applied to kind of all of this. But by dragging this down, we're now not affecting the highlights. We're now only affecting the shadows. If I was to do the other thing, if I was to drag this up, we would no longer affect the shadows and then it would just be the midtones. And we have full control as to how that feathers off as well. We can pull this down so that it's kind of just affecting the shadows, feathering off a little bit. So I want it to be affecting the shadows and I want it to be affecting, I want it to affect pretty much everything except the brightest parts of this this, uh, this photo. So let's, let's go with that and let's click apply here. Then we can press M to turn that off. And that's created this kind of warm brightness. If I turn this off and back on, you can see it's kind of created this warm brightness, but without, without blowing anything out any further. There's really no end to how far you could go with this. So for example, if we wanted to brighten up the lighthouse, we might select a new layer. Let's call this one Lighthouse. Uh, let's select the radiant, or the radial gradient mask, radiant, the radial gradient mask. And uh, let's just draw this around the lighthouse here. Let's press M so we can see exactly what's going on. And then let's press M to turn it off again. With this one, what we're gonna do is, it's actually gonna affect everything except the lighthouse. So if I was to bring the exposure down a touch, maybe the brightness down, just a touch. If I turn this on and off, so this is on and then off. What we're getting is a very subtle lightness around the lighthouse, which is which is kind of just helps draw your eye to it a little bit. It might be something that in this photo I probably wouldn't use. But it's something that we can use as a, as a layer. It's a good example, I think. Finally, let's do another layer where we affect the clouds. So I'm going to create a new layer again. I'm going to call this one Clouds. I'm going to come up here to the, uh, the Gradient Mask tool here. So let's press M so we can see. And let's, uh, let's drag that down so that we are, we are covering the clouds here. Now I'm going to press M to turn the mask off again. What I might do here is bring the clarity up so that the clouds pop out of the sky a little bit more. Maybe bring the structure up. And then you could do all kinds of things. You could bring the white balance down if you want to do, so really make that blue sky feel a bit more, a bit more alive, you know, a bit more, a bit more poppy as a blue sky. Or you could warm it right up. You could really go mad and have the sky be, be this vibrant orange. Of course, you can then go into saturation. And of course, if you want to come over to color and really make, uh, make those oranges and those yellows much richer, you can certainly do that. You can affect the hues and really get the really get the golden sort of tones that you wanna go for. Something I would be uh, careful with if you're affecting the colors of one part of the photo. So in this situation, if you're affecting the colors of the sky but leaving the rest of the photo the same, you just wanna be careful you don't change things too much because it can start to look a bit weird. If the sky is one kind of shade of, of orange and yellow, and then the reflection is a very different shade of, of kind of this golden yellow. 
that can start to look a little bit weird. So you want to be careful of that. You just want to be aware of it. Uh, but I think we've done we've done a lot to this photo. Now I wouldn't necessarily have done all of this this photo, but I think it makes for a great uh, a great example. But we can look at, at how far we've come by holding Alt again and left clicking and holding on the reset button. That was how we started, and this is where we've come to. I really like it. I really like the warm tones, uh, and frankly, I really like working with layers within Capture One. Now, I'll pop a link to the Capture One software down in the description, maybe even in the comments as well, just so you can go and check out the software for yourself. If you do have any questions about anything you've seen in the video or anything to do with the photography of it or anything at all, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts about all of this as well. If you have any experience with Capture One and working with layers, how you feel about it, maybe Capture One versus Lyrum, that kind of stuff, anything at all, pop it down in the comments. I'd love to hear all about it. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And, whoo, as always, thanks for watching.